Blagon Slayer here. Today I am going to try and show you guys how to change the belt, uh, basically you untension and retension it for a Gates carbon belt drive. I have mine set up with a pinion here. So grab yourself a little glass of wine and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll start with is the little dropouts here are going to be spaced differently depending on what bike you have. Mine has a bolt that spaces it uh, from the bottom bracket, basically is keeping tension on this guy. And then these two bolts here uh, tighten it, they clamp it down so that it doesn't slide. This bolt isn't actually really doing anything technically when I'm riding. Um, it's all in these guys, and it's the same on the other side. So this guy will slide back and forth. Your bike may be a little bit different, but uh, there will be a system that's similar. Another thing to note here is uh, any bike that can take a uh, belt drive is going to have a way to open the frame up. Mine happens to have a bolt right here that I can take out. Uh, you just open it and then squeeze these apart and the belt will slide out. I'm not going to do that, but that's how you're going to get your belt in and out. It's not that bad. I just don't feel like doing it. So I am going to go ahead and pull this all apart here, and then I'll show you guys how to retension it. Okay, so I need a 4, 5, and 6 millimeter wrenches for this. It may be different on yours. I'm also going to need an eight millimeter wrench to pull off the little nut here to loosen it. It's actually already loose, but this guy is just basically a spacer to know where you left it. When you undo your, uh, when you pull this guy out, this will keep your marks. So you can get it back in straight. One very important point is that you do not want to take out your axle with your through axle uh, before you undo the tension on the belt. If you do this, you will strip your threads here. I have done it. So we'll go ahead and loosen these guys. Got them nice and tight. Let's see here. Jesus. As you can see, it's been a while since I've taken them off. Whew. You do not want your bolts this tight. That's a little excessive. Okay, do the other side here. Okay, and you don't have to pull those guys out all the way if you don't want to. You can basically just loosen them a little bit and that's fine, just so you can turn this little guy here. Mine has a little wrench, so we'll get in there and just back that guy out and you can see the tension on the belt is already loosening up. So we'll do the same thing on the back there. As you can see on this guy, I have a little uh, support there. So it's definitely trickier. I always undo the other side first, so there's a little slack, and then back this guy out. And you can go, you know, you don't want it all the way out. Now what we'll do, we can slide this, these guys forward if we want. I'm going to go ahead and since there's no tension on the belt, nothing is pulling uh, on these threads here. Uh, that was what was happening before. If you unscrewed this, it was going to pull the whole wheel forward the belt was. Now that that tension's gone, I'm going to unscrew my through axle. Okay. Okay, got the through axle out, 
And now I can just lift the whole wheel out and slide this guy right off like that. Okay, you can see that I got the whole thing off. These guys slide back and forth like this. And then you can do whatever maintenance you need to um, on your wheel, whatever. I actually need to change out the spacers. I'm not going to do that today. But I'll throw this back guy back on. So you can see this whole thing's loose over here. This guy's loose. What I like to do is first get the belt on the front here. Center track, pretty easy. Goes on, it'll stay. It's a lot easier putting this back on if you have a stand or something, but you're gonna have to do this out on a trail at some point, so I'll show you how. Get the wheel up in here. Get it on the rear. Okay, it's nice. And then, once that's on, just drop the wheel right on into the dropouts before you tighten these guys. Put this back in there. Okay, drop this guy in. And then slide your through axle in. Make sure this guy's lined up. This can be a big pain in the butt. If you feel it clicking, you hear this? Hear that? Okay, should be seated in there. Okay, I got my through axle nice and tight here. This is one of the most important parts. Mine's kind of filthy down there, sorry. But you wanna make sure that your bike is, your wheel is lined up, it's not to the right, it's not to the left. You wanna make sure it's centered. So you'll actually, one of the best ways to do this, is kinda of hard to see on the camera, you get over top and make sure the the space between the tire and here and the tire on the left side is equal. One way you can do that is spacing these guys out. You push these back and you can kind of see the belt get tighter. Or I'm just doing this side. You want to do them evenly. So you can do this side as well. And as I push this side, it's going to push the axle back and it's going to tilt the tire you know, that way is kind of rotates the whole thing. This guy is going to do the opposite. He's going to pull the tire in the front this way toward me. So if you play with it, you'll figure it out. And when you get close to tensioning the belt to where you, where you think it's right, mine's way too loose right now, then I will show you how to use the app to get it to the proper tension. But you want to make sure the wheel is straight and you're close first. Okay, and it's pretty easy to see here. This is why these little nuts are nice. If you just, sometimes they get stuck, but uh, when you first back these guys out, leave them where they are because then you can just screw these guys right back into where the nut is and you're going to be right on where you were or very close even if it gets a little knocked off and then it's really easy to do it from there. So, as you can see, I'm getting a little bit closer. And I'm going to show you how to use the app now. Okay, so I've got my Gates Carbon Belt Drive app here. You can download it. It's pretty easy. We go in. You can go to instructions, and it tells you how to use it. You basically just hold it right over the belt like this. Recommended frequency. So it gives you all sorts of information uh pedaling style i believe there are weight adjustments as well i don't know if that was on the box or where i saw that but since i'm riding mountain and i would say i'm probably tend to be rougher i believe what i've been running mine at is between 65 and 70 um kind of just above the smooth style uh you can see the the punchy and rough pedaling style wants a higher tension and then you just hold this guy above it, press the little power button, and this might not work while I'm recording the screen. Let's try it out. 
Okay, so you can see here on my screen, uh, I had the 68, and then I had a couple where I was talking higher frequency, 68, 69, I was reading right at 68, 69 consistently, so I'm happy with that. I wasn't able to record my uh, frequency while I was recording the screen, because uh, Google doesn't let you do that. So I'm where I want to be as far as the belt tension. Okay, so we got the belt tension where it needs to be. Now I just want to tighten these guys up. One thing to note is you probably don't want these guys real loose uh, while you're actually tensioning the belt uh, because you want this all straight. It could add play, and who knows what that'll do to the belt tension. Uh, I've done this several times, and if they're with this bike, if they're a little bit loose, I mean, they kind of have to be, um, then it's fine. And then I, I measure it after I tighten everything down and it stays the same so I'm not too worried about it but that's just something to be aware of. So we'll tighten these guys back up and then we are good to go. Another note I want to add with these guys the reason they were so tight when I took them off was I have had issues with them coming loose actually I believe it was on my brake side uh, during a ride, and I don't know if I had tightened them down, but so I'm a little paranoid about it. I would prefer to not have anything come loose while I'm riding, uh, so I tighten them way down. Uh, I'm sure you could put paste in there or something, not keep them as tight, but uh, yeah, make sure they're tight. A note on the belt itself um, and whether it's quiet, how long it lasts. It does get a little bit squeaky sometimes. Uh, I'm dry, riding in Colorado. It's really dry. There's, it's yeah, it's just really dry, and it'll start squeaking. At first, I thought it was like a bearing or something in here, but after calling Reeb up, the nice folks at Reeb, they told me uh, to put a little water on there um, to lubricate it, and I did that. I just use my water bottles, dump a little water on it, and it completely goes silent. So it was not a bearing. Um, which is a huge relief to me, um, but it does, it just squeaks when it gets dry. I don't know if it's like the dirt, the dust, or what, um, but, but a little water will help that. As far as the life, these guys are supposed to last, I don't know, I've heard 10,000 kilometers plus, I don't know. I don't honestly ride hard enough or ride enough to wear a chain out, much less a belt. Uh, I'm only 160 pounds, uh, so maybe if you're big and you're doing a lot of sprinting and tough stuff, but uh, yeah, these guys last really well. I'll also add, I have had friends who've told me they've been able to make a belt skip, which I think is absolutely insane. I don't believe them, first of all, and I think if they did make it skip, then likely it was not tight enough. I can't imagine making one of these skip um, it's, it's 10 times better than a chain. I have had zero problems with this guy. One note regarding actually lining, uh, up the belt when you're installing this, if you're using a free wheel, I have a bunch of spacers here. It's cheap. I know. Uh, but what you want is you want this guy to line up. You don't want to see any, uh, you know, bend in the belt. You don't want to come coming off here and then seeing it turn at all. You want it straight. So uh, a lot of spacers is nice. You can always take it to a shop and have it checked. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to get this guy straight because it does have the center track and that's, that's keeping it on, but still you don't want wear on the center track. You want it to run smoothly. And there you have it. Well, I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave comments in the comment section. Uh, leave a like, subscribe if you like it, and have a great day.